Hey, thanks for tuning in for another rock and roll tale. We're going to flash back today to 1986, going back to a time when I was working at a record store in Peoria, Illinois, called Co-op Tapes and Records, behind the counter, selling records, and uh, CDs soon to come, of course, uh, you know, that came very quickly. Well, there was a guy that was a friend of the uh, store manager, or store owner, Bob Harrington, the, and the friend, his name was Butch Duffy, right? And he owned a pretty cool place in Peoria Heights that was known for live music, especially really good live blues music. And it was called Duffy's, or Duffy's Rooftop, or Duff's Rooftop. Well, he had a lot of good bands there over the years, like Coco Taylor, John Hammond, people like that, and a ton of others. But one person that he had in particular that kind of made Peoria, Illinois, Central Illinois history was the night that Stevie Ray Vaughan came to town and uh, played there. Now I'll get to that story, but first let me back up and tell you about Bernard Allison. Bernard Allison was uh, and is a legendary blues figure. Uh, you can look him up if you're not a fan already. Bernard Allison is known internationally, especially over in Europe. He does reside, or at least he did reside in France. Uh, and he is the son of legendary blues guitar player Luther Allison. Luther Allison was residing uh, overseas, but he also had a home in Peoria, Illinois, that he kind of was back and forth at. And his wife, Fanny, was actually working with my mother. So my mom worked with... Bernard Allison, son of Luther Allison. Well, it just so happens that I went to high school with Bernard Allison at Richwoods High School in Peoria, and we were friends because we were both into music. Uh, he knew me as Bloody, and he also knew me as my real name because, well, uh, our parents worked together, and he knew my legal name and all that good stuff. One time, Bernard invited me to his apartment uh, that he was still living at with his mom, and, uh, and dad when he was around, when he was in, you know, out playing gigs. And on the walls of Bernard's house were just cool pictures of him with, like, the most legendary of blues names, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, B.B. King, Johnny Winter, you know, like uh, Albert King, like Eric Clapton, like very big names in blues. And I realized, wow, my high school pal here is really a bigger star than I know. And he would go over to Europe and play, but not even really being that known in Illinois, though he was very respected. And he was known, but not like on a big level. Well, uh, what, what happened was, uh, one time we found out that Duff's Rooftop was going to be hosting a Bernard Allison show, and I had been talking to Bernard, and of course uh, Bernard told me a little secret. It was a big secret in Peoria, but everyone knew who was in the know. Stevie Ray Vaughan was going to be playing at the Peoria Civic Center Arena, and after the show, he was going to stop by Duff's Rooftop, and he was going to perform with his friend Bernard. Well, a lot of people said, oh yeah, right, that's not going to happen. Yeah, sure, Stevie Ray Vaughan's got time for that. And I'm like, uh, I go to school with Bernard, I've seen the photos, he's going to be there. So I believed Bernard 100%, and uh, showed up to the club that night completely excited. I had a little tape recorder in hand, and before those stupid 2020 Almeida fires, I actually had a recording of the whole thing. But tonight I found out you can go on YouTube and type in this date, December 13th, 1986, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Bernard Allison, Peoria Heights, Illinois. It's on YouTube. So that was so cool to find out. Uh, it was awesome, man, you guys. Um, Duff's Eatery, that was a separate place from Duff's Rooftop, was located on Sheridan Road in Peoria, uh, Illinois, and they were known for their famous Chicago dogs, and they had a slogan called, We Relish Your Buns. Yep, no kidding. And these Chicago dogs were made with Vienna beef, served with uh, real, you know, hand-cut French fries. And these dogs were loaded down, man, with sauerkraut and pickle relish and onions and tomatoes and peppers and ketchup, mustard and relish and poppy seed bun to top it off. Uh, or I should have say, all on a poppy seed bun. Uh, these guys were really awesome. So Duff's were there that night. I'm in the audience. Bernard is on stage with his band. He's kicking ass. Bernard shows up to the show. Bernard Allison's a legend, you guys. And he shows up with the same kind of outfit that, say, Jimi Hendrix would wear, minus the psychedelia. But it was like a white kimono. It looked really cool. He had his earring dangling from his ear. He had this really neat hat on. It was like, whoa. And man, if you haven't seen Bernard Allison play guitar, wait till you see that video that you're going to go search for Stevie Ray Vaughan and Bernard Allison. Watch that man play. 
He is incredible, and you'll know why Stevie Ray stopped by. Well, on the night of the show, uh, I was just tickled beyond pink to watch, you know, uh, Bernard and his band, of course. Um, Stevie was with the band Double Trouble at the time, but Bernard had his own, his own band, and I'm sure somebody will uh, clue me in uh, in the uh, comment section of Bernard's band. I want to say the Bartes, but I can't remember. Anyway, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Bernard were buddies. Bernard was up there doing stuff that he had played, you know, in, in the past. I'd heard some of his recordings. I'd never seen him live before, to be honest, as his friend. And I was completely blown away by this man. He was just incredible. And as the night wore on, it got to be later and later and later. Well, Peoria, Illinois lets bars stay open until 4 in the morning. It's one of the only places where the bars close at 4 and open at 6. At some point, really after maybe two or three sets of Bernard's, the side door opened to Duff's Eatery and, or Duffy's rooftop, sorry, and Stevie Ray Vaughan walked in. Yep, there was this big purple feather. It was a black hat with the big, huge purple feather. And oh man, it was just like, there he is. And everyone in the place kind of erupted like, that's it. We've all been hearing about the secret and here it is. It's not a secret, it's truth. It's actually not fiction, it's fantasy. <laughs> I'm kidding. Vice versa. Stevie Ray Vaughan gets on stage with a Bernard Allison guitar. It's white and it says Bernard Allison on it. And he just starts immediately playing. He's dressed in all his cool Stevie Ray Vaughan garb. He's got his badass hat on. He's got his really, the cool shirt that he was wearing for that tour. I really can't describe it, but you can see it in that video. But it's just wicked, man. He's just dressed to the nines. Bernard's got his little, uh, not little, but his badass guitar strap on that's got music notes on it. These guys look like complete rock stars, and they and they played like they shouldn't even be in a little bar. But we were blessed. We were blessed. They did a great smoking set, and these guys were great. Bernard started off the uh, set by introducing everyone to the great Stevie Ray Vaughan. Everyone completely erupted. Now, if you ask me how many people were there, I'm going to say 300 or less. Somebody else might pipe in and say, oh, there was only 100 there. But I'm going to say two or 300. I don't know, something like that. It was pretty, it was a nice sized club. Uh, it was medium to small, but it was packed to the gills. And these guys came out and did Texas Flood. It's like the Jimi Hendrix songs of, of Stevie Ray Vaughan songs, if you know what I'm saying. It's just epic. And um, yeah, it was really good. Those guys were trading off guitar licks, standing next to each other and just doing things that were amazing. Stevie was up there completely doing things with his fingers at some at some points where Bernard was like looking down and completely blown away, you could tell. He was grinning ear to ear. It was crazy cool, man. And uh, I saw Stevie Ray Vaughan doing some crazy licks. It was just unbelievable, man. These guys were trading off licks for, a, it was a good long, oh gosh, at least seven and a half minute version. Could be longer. It was very good. The band was smoking. They were a great rhythm section happening you know, up on the stage. I uh, don't know the guy's names, but Bernard and Stevie were up front and center. Stevie didn't look up at the crowd very much. He's very much focused on his guitar, almost like it's coming straight from his soul. He would look down at his guitar, and he would just have his eyes closed almost the whole time he was up there. He wasn't up there to get all the glory and be the great rock star coming to invade Bernard's show. He was coming to jam with a friend like, like good musicians do. Most rock stars, after they're done playing a show, they're unwinding. They're going to shower and get, you know, sleep, you know, cleaned off. Not Stevie. When his show ended at the Civic Center, he was at this place within half an hour in his gear, walked right off the bus, right onto the stage, and just smoked. Uh, then they went into Pride and Joy, which was a big hit for Stevie Ray Vaughan. And again, Bernard and Stevie up there trading licks. They, at one point, Bernard Allison put the guitar behind his head and was playing. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan had his guitar behind his uh, back. They were both playing at the same time. It was mind-blowing, man. Stevie did it first, actually, and I saw Bernard quickly pick up the guitar, flip it over, and his hat jump fell off his head, and they were both playing for a couple of minutes solid behind their backs. Stevie had his kind of held down below his, like, his uh, uh, top of his legs, and uh, Bernard has his right here. It was just really super cool, you guys. And after they did Pride and Joy, those guys rocked right into the song Scuttle Button. Uh, the place was crazy going nuts, and I'm so glad that somebody videotaped that night. Stevie was up there, and it was like he was playing in front of either, it could have been 10,000 people or 10. 
you could tell this guy would have given the exact same show. I was so stoked because I was a big fan and still am a big fan of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, went on to be in a band called The Renegades later that covered Stevie Ray Vaughan, actually. If you guys like this story, please subscribe if you would and hit the like button if you would and leave a comment. The last song that Stevie Ray and Bernard broke into that night was Mary Had a Little Lamb. And of course, that was a nice long jam session and uh, I'm telling you, I'm not overstating it when I say these guys were killing it on guitar, man. There was things going on I just can't describe with Stevie and uh, you could tell that... Uh, he knew there was magic in the air, and so did Bernard. It was pretty freaking cool, you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you sticking around to hear this story about Stevie Ray Vaughan and Bernard Allison. It was my pleasure to be at that particular event. If you're watching Butch Duffy, thank you so much for doing those shows back in the day. Uh, I do remember something funny. When I was working at Co-op Records, Bob Harrington told me, you know, the owner of Co-op, he said, yeah, Butch says you make him nervous when you come to the club. And I'm like, you know, I was kind of known in the papers back then quite a bit because I was bloody messing this punk rock band and whatnot in a small kind of town. And I think I made him nervous, but he said I, I would come there and I would uh, walk in and out of the place and never sit down and move around a lot. I'm like, well, that's kind of my style, man. I'll walk around and talk to people, go have a drink, go outside, you know, walk up by the band. But I guess he was used to people that were more, you know, laid back and excuse me if I'm a little hyper. Anyway, thanks for being here. I'll be back again within 24 hours for yet another rock and roll tale. And I'll try to post earlier tomorrow, but no promises, man. But tomorrow for sure, guys. Uh, one a day until at least Saturday or Sunday. And then I'm headed up to Portland, Oregon for uh, about five days. And I'll probably bring my little light with me and maybe do some stories from Portlandia. Thank you so much. Again, if you would subscribe, I'd appreciate it. It helps me build the channel. And uh, if you give it a like and a comment, I'll comment back. Adios, my friends. Rock and roll.